Ladies and gentlemen, coming out of the building! Yeah, hell yeah! Hell oh. Yes! <laughs> is he barking at me? Because he heard me? Yeah. I, I think, think he's so. just excited, dude. Oh, man, that is awesome. I love, I feed lit, off dude. the energy. I feed off the energy. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, if, if someone that's watching may not know who you guys are, can you please properly introduce yourself? Let us know whereabouts in the world you're, uh, you're chilling right now. Plug and promote anything and everything. What's up? Uh, my name is Travis. I sing for a band called Colorblind. Uh, we are from uh, Austin, Texas, and uh, we just finished up a self-titled EP that we're real excited about. We're really happy to be here. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm Tyler. I play drums in the band. Very stoked to be here. We appreciate you guys giving us the time to come hang out with y'all. Thank you for taking the time as well. Sean of uh, legendary band I the Breather is my co-host oh, yeah. today. Have you guys ever What's had a chance up, to yeah. to jam his band before? Oh yeah, absolutely, man. I actually played in a band a long time ago and we got to play with you guys one time. Yeah. At if I think it was at the door in Dallas, probably in like twenty sixteen or something like that. Dude, that's and wild. I, I was, was like listening to you guys earlier and I was like, Man, these guys are sick, but I, they have Probably have no idea who I am, but oh. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him questions and act like I'm just some regular guy on the street, and we'll do it. <laughs> no, nah, man, you you have no idea how, how far of a reach you had. It was I used to love Thanks, that shit. Man. Of course. Oh yeah. Well, welcome guys. Yes, we we appreciate you being here. Uh, so you said that the EP is coming out soon. Um, I imagine uh, all the promotions going on for it. But I want to know. I'm gonna go back a little bit. How long has the band been together for? So the band has been, I joined a little later than the band was formed. The band started in 2017 uh, with, a, with a different vocalist. And uh, then I j ended up joining the band, I think like mid 2018 or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're actually coming up on our anniversary of the first song we ever released, which was dropped, I believe it was on February 1st of 2017. And it was a track called Shameless, which did a lot for us. Um, and yeah, I mean, we kind of, we went through like a few member changes at the beginning, just kind of getting things solidified. But ever since he joined, it's been, you know, just straight shooting since then. So in, in the set, Travis, do you, do you play anything from the previous vocalist or is it just all the new fresh material? Uh, yeah, we, we have been ending with Shameless, which is from the old vocalist. And I mean, I, I did all the material when we were writing this stuff or when like when I was writing my songs with this band, I was doing a lot of shows, playing a lot of the the older songs, and they're fucking fun, dude. Like I like playing them. Like yeah. I think they're especially like Shameless is always just like a fun song to to sing and and uh, yeah. Awesome, uh, Sean. What questions do you have for the fellas? Um. Okay. So I I noticed you guys are from Austin. Uh, yes. I feel like there's so many awesome ass fans and people from that area um uh my my one buddy plays in a band called head over heels you guys wear them yes you know this guys that's cool and like left for dead is from from san antonio down there we yeah. got the upon uh, burning body guys and yeah yeah it's rad um so i i noticed that you're drinking a beverage right now uh what are you drinking tonight we're drinking uh, this is a strawberry sparkling water. Oh, and this is probably the the lamest shit ever. But this is a Starbucks drink, <laughs> and I'm embarrassed to even talk about it. But it's like a cold brew pistachio cream. You got a crazy order. When you order in the line, they get all pissed off, right? No, it's <laughs> it's on the menu. I'm not. Okay. I'm not one of the people that's like, can I get a fucking lemon? Like, oh, it's on the menu. Okay, okay. And it's just so, it's too good. Hey, dude. If you're paying that much money for your coffee, you, you should be able to like. Well, I've, I've, I've worked you're... in the service industry like my like I still work in the service industry now like so I I hate those like you know I try to be as respectful as I can going. There. Speaking of, um, I do I do you know that kind of like.
art and like your passion like what do you guys do on the side to be able to keep that afloat dude we're all just like i'm a waiter <laughs> i'm i'm a I, like i just serve tables at a at a restaurant in austin that's this like little house that's a, honestly fun little job um i will do like some like tree shit like my friend runs like a tree company and i'll go help him out with that and uh tyler uh i'll let you uh, yeah, so myself and another guy, uh, the bass player in the band, his name is Nick Asper. We both work in like the at, at craft breweries in Austin. Nice. So um, it kind of seems to go hand in hand. There's a lot of musicians that work at breweries, and they're you know so yeah. we're really fortunate that the managers at the places give us all the time off we need for touring and stuff. And it's a uh, and it's also a cool job, you know. Like I've. I don't think I could ever do like a like a desk job of any kind. I'm just not good with that kind of a uh, environment. So, I love making the beer. I love the people that are involved. It's a super laid back job, and I have all the flexibility I need to to go on the road when we need to. And then another guy, Justin, the guitar player in the band, he's also in the service industry. He works uh, like he's been working at some bars and different restaurants and stuff like that. So, we have all just kind of been like piecing it together, making it work, and you know making music priority and thankfully we're supported so yeah but okay. if, or, or, go ahead no you you're our guest you go oh uh, i was just like like the, this ep was the first time that we ever got like help with like some funding on the work that we've done uh so before this it was all just us just like working and throwing money in a saving our shit and just like doing everything we could to make it work we are all just working and saving up our money and and buying studio time and putting money into you know well something must be working you're at 236,000 monthly listeners on spotify so some, something's oh, shit! yeah something's going well uh tyler real quick to follow up on your question about the brewery i, I just had a curiosity do you ever get a chance to be like I want to try this beer. And then you guys get to like, you get to just pick a bunch of ingredients and have a say so in making like a strawberry guava IPA or something crazy. Yeah. That's, it, that's the direction you went. <laughs> I don't mean, I don't know. It's just something that's not common. Oh now, shit. Fortunately, the company that I work for is very open to that. And if you have an idea for something, they're willing to hear you out and it's, you know, very collaborative um awesome. i'm pretty new there so i haven't had an opportunity to do that yet but i'm i'm pretty excited to do that once i get the chance i don't know when it's going to be but hopefully sooner than later dude i went there the other day and they have like taps in the in the brewery room and he was like hey try that they like carbonated gatorade powder and it's like yeah. sparkling red fruit punch gatorade and lemon lime and shit and it was like delicious it's a game changer. somebody was high as fuck <laughs> yeah right yeah <laughs> smoke weed every day. hell yeah uh so fellas oh, once man. the ep comes out and then we're gonna jam a song here in a second but once the ep comes out i know there's some stuff you're not allowed to tell us for promotion reasons but what are you allowed to tell us as, as far as the plans are for 2023 dude i mean like really plans that we have for 2023 is just trying to uh get touring on this on this record uh we have a tour coming up this february with like with limbs and vagrants and dark divine and am i missing anyone uh we're doing a couple of uh a couple of dates with famous last words uh so that uh, that'll be yeah yeah and uh but yeah like that's what we have right now we're working on some other stuff right now some some other things we're trying to get going. There's some things up in the air, but uh, for right now, it's really just that. Our, our plans for 2023 are just trying to be on the road as much as we can and starting to get writing on some more stuff to keep this ball rolling, you know? Yeah. That is awesome. Oh, yeah. uh, my favorite is Ghosts, but is there a particular song that you'd like Ooh, yeah. us to play if, if for someone that may not have ever heard your band before? I think that's that's a great one, dude. Yeah. So we'll do ghosts. I'm gonna look up some trivia and then I'll let Sean ask some questions. Uh, it takes me a couple of minutes to look up the trivia. What movie or TV show have you guys seen more than anything? Or if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped. Fuck, dude. I'm Mine's, mine is Shit's Creek. So okay. I, I I feel pretty confident that I could answer most things. He's probably gonna have to take that because I suck at watching shows and movies and shit. Like I I hate this about myself, but like I don't know a lot about shows. 
It's S C H I T Z. It's uh, S <laughs> C H I T T Z. I think T T Z. Okay. Oh man. <laughs> That's I've hilarious. never seen an episode. That's why you can tell I'm, I'm not going to do anything. Okay, I, I got to look uh, deep on it. Let's play Ghosts. Sean, we'll come back to you with some questions. Oh, we're hanging out with yes, Colorblind. Sir. If you guys are feeling it, please go on Spotify. You'll see on the screen right here. Hit that follow button! <laughs> Sean, go ahead and, and shoot off uh, a question, and then I, I'm ready to go after after you got that. All right, cool. Bef before question, uh, sorry, first of all, because on the 19th, I think y'all are playing Chicago. Mm -hmm. And that's where I live. And I'm going to be in Maryland, where I'm from, at my best friend's wedding. And I was so oh. bummed when I saw that today you guys were going to be here. So I would have been there. Um, yeah, you guys are killing it. I really respect what you're doing, for real. Um, yeah, that means a lot coming from you, man. Thank yeah, you. for real. Hey, I appreciate that. So one thing that like really benefited me when when – uh, my band was coming up is we kind of had like people that gave us advice. You know, we, we were friends with like the guys that know sleeper and August Burns red and guys that were just like doing it, Gwen Stacy. Um, yeah. and if there was like for a band that doesn't have that outreach, those type of people that can give them that type of advice, what would you like tell a band? Like what's, what's like the big thing that they need to focus on nowadays in the music industry? Cause I feel like it's so complex. So what would they, like, what is the one thing you would say, like, this should be number one, this should be it, your, your, your main focus? I think it depends a lot on what your goals are as a group, but something that I think was really beneficial for us is make sure you're spending money on good recordings, good visuals, um, seek out a team like find a good manager, find something like that. If you have the, the means to do that. I mean, it's those little things make the biggest difference, man. Like if it, if people can tell that you give a fuck about what you're doing and you're, you have good quality products and it's, you've got good songwriting. I mean, hi, hire people for the help. I mean, it's that kind of stuff I think goes a long way. And it also kind of gives back to your scene a little bit as well, because you're paying people like videographers and artists and stuff like that instead of just trying to do it all yourself which i think is is great there are some like really rare cases where you have just like incredible songwriters in the band you have incredible producers in the band you have incredible visual artists in the band and you can just do everything you know if that's the case that's awesome but it's really really rare so i would just say just be consistent, have a plan with your releases, try and try to stay. I mean, you have to stay relevant. You got to try to release a song at least once or twice a year and, you know, just spend the money on good quality stuff. That's what I, my advice would be. Two, yeah. Two. And I th my bad. Also, my bad. like when it comes to like writing with, with, um, you know, lyrically and like the things you want to talk about, like, I mean, I heard, uh, like a Rick Rubin say like, dude, the audience comes last, like in that regard, if you're too caught up in, in thinking about what other people want or what other people want from you, then like, like, cause I found myself in situations where I was writing songs for someone else. Cause they were looking for something specific out of me, you know? And every single time I was done with those songs, I wasn't happy. Like, I wasn't happy with it, you know? And whenever I, um, whenever, like, like with this EP specifically, like, we sat down with our producer, Josh Landry, and before we even started fucking around with vocal melodies, he was like, okay, what matters to you? Like, what matters to you? What do you care about? And, like, then we came out with a product that, like, like, is emotional and feels close to me, you know? And, Dude, I, uh, I, and I think, honestly, that's, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I think that that is the best answer you could have. And, and I, re I respect your, your answer as well, too. But yes, you could have the, the recordings and stuff. That's so important. But I feel like so many bands come out that with these days and then they last like six months, you know. But guess what they're missing? They're missing the heart. They're missing the 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 why am I here and the passion for it and the burning desire. There's no point in stepping in front of a microphone if you don't have a reason to be there, you know. Uh, you're just going to be another somebody, you know what I mean? And yeah. what's going to set you apart as a musician is going to be with your struggles and, and what makes you different, you know? 
and that will outshine everything and, and that that will give your audience something to latch on to yeah you you guys have your heads in the right direction you, got, you guys have like a, a good business aspect on one end and then a, a very uh very like a personable and emotional connection on the other end and those two when they com combine that's when you can create things that last with longevity and i hope you guys get that seriously i, I dig what you guys are doing thank you we so appreciate much, it dude we appreciate that i, I want to roll off your answer to sean's question real quick tyler uh you, you said about seeking management let's say let's say some small time bands are watching how would you suggest they go about seeking the management uh that's a good question man because i i feel like it's generally a good idea to try to kind of get a little bit of material under your belt for a little while first so that a manager has something to to manage mm -hmm. um but i mean i think it's a good thing to because people are going to come out and they're going to ask you about management like we've had some managers reach out to us and a good thing to keep in mind is the majority of the time like the first manager we worked with, well, fuck, I don't know if I should even say that. Like, like, sorry if this is 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 if this is like, breaking news. Calling out Tommy right now. Here we go. That's the business of this industry. Yeah, that, that's all. It's it's working with you know, you kind of just have to stumble your way through it until it works out. It's kind of. If that might sound really dumb, but I basically just mean like, I would say first, just focus on writing, playing live. Uh, and then once you have a little bit of material under your belt and, you know, then you can kind of start looking at managers, you know, and, but, you, and using your, your intuition, man. Like if you sit down and talk to somebody who's considering like managing your band, it's like, like. I'm like a, a sensitive, emotional person, you know, and like I look for that in business partners, you know, like you want to look for a relationship with somebody that uh, you can tell is there and is present and gives a shit and asks you questions about things that you care about versus sitting down with somebody who's just only worried about the analytics of your band and the and the you know like the businessy parts of like we really like our manager now because like dude he like he cares about us and that's and that's obvious and it's prevalent checking up on us making sure we're cool and doing okay and like that's a cool thing to look for in in, in somebody who's going to be a part of your team yeah at the top off of that bg we're rolling, another rolling, beautiful rolling. thing yeah dude we're just going to keep going another beautiful thing that you can look at too is is if you are doing the right things and you're doing, you know, all those things that you said you should do, right? If there's a manager worth anything, he's going to find you. And yeah. what does the manager want at the end of the day? He's going to want the bread and he's going to reach out to you. If you're doing the right things, you shouldn't have to be like blasting all these different managers and this and that, yeah. you know, like it works here and there. And it, you know, it generally can get you somewhere. Um, but if you're doing all the things you need to be doing, Having that one guy reach out to you versus you hitting him up could be the difference in your career because yeah. it's like you got somebody that's fighting for you, not yeah. you fighting for to get with them. You know, you kind of have like a good leverage there. Yes. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, man. That was that's exactly right. Were you guys prepped ahead of time about the hot sauce? <laughs> Are we there? Oh, you were not prepped about the hot sauce. Lizzie, <laughs> complete fail. OK, so when we oh, do the trivia. Do you have any hot sauce around? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, so the goal of the trivia is for me to stump you, and we're doing Shit's Creek. If I ask you a question on Shit's Creek and you get stumped, I ask that you take a swig of hot sauce. I'll do it with you, and if you get it right, we spin a wheel and some crazy, some crazy Shit's Creek stuff happens. Okay, I'm gonna go get the hot sauce. I'll be back. Oh hey. shit! Damn it! I went see this. See this. This is another reason why I wish I fucking watched shit. <laughs> Like, I, 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 run, I run into this issue a lot in my life. People are like, dude, have you fucking seen, like, Game of Thrones and this and that? I'm like, dude, every single, I mean, it's been on in the background, and, like, every There's time dragons. it's been on, someone's just getting their dick cut off or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, hey, for sure. At least sure. you're not like me, and I, I fall asleep during everything. Yeah. I don't even yeah, get the yeah. ability to watch it. I just, <laughs> done. Yeah. That's funny. That's funny. Uh, I got see. my shit ready. 
We're here right now. You got, you, what do you have beef, hot, spicy beef, Cajun jerky? I don't know, man. I was, I was at the beer store and I looked and oh, shit. to my benounce, there was, there was a pack of coffee and cayenne pecker, pep, <laughs> pecker, pepper. <laughs> Just waiting for we're me off, to take. We're it. off to a great start today. I love it. So, so what I'll do is is like me and me and Tyler is my brother, by the way. Um, you I'm guys gonna, are bros. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're brothers. Yeah. Why didn't um, he invite you to be in the band in the first place? Why did yeah, it take so long to get you in? Come on, I, man. I kept it a big secret from everybody that I sang. Oh well. So that's kind of something. I'm going to show them one day. But, dude, yeah, I mean, yeah. But, okay, so, fuck, dude. Okay, so I guess what we're going to do is I'm going to be in this with Tyler. So if he if he misses a question, I'm just going to get fucked, too. You're counting on him. You're counting on him. That's like some high-end sriracha right there. I don't know. Uh, I got it in my Christmas stocking this year. It's called <laughs> Tattoo Hot Sauce. It's a cashmere coconut. That's an interesting brand name, Tattoo Hot Sauce. Yeah. That might not be a hot sauce. It might be like a like a sex was... thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shit, dude. It's ink, ink color. <laughs> All right, Spicy well, night. Let's try, let's try and stuff them, Sean. Here we go. On Shit's Creek, Moira joins a singing group in season two. Yeah. What is the name of the singing group? Jazzy Gals. Jazzy Gals is... That is correct. Okay. Cool. Damn it. So I gotta ask a harder one. Is that what that was? What is that? The one that I have? Yeah. Yeah. Japanese Dragon Breath? I just grabbed a random one. I have like 15 right here. And I have to to put that on a sour (laughs) candy while doing this interview because I could not stump you. Okay. So, All right. Oh yeah. Fair. So, All Sean, go ahead and shoot off another. You guys can shoot it too if you want. There's, there's no rules against it. Okay. It's your call. What, it's your call. What do you want me to shoot right now, dude? I'm a hot sauce bitch, dude. Uh oh, you're in trouble. You want yeah. me to, you want me to eat some stuff right now? Oh. Yeah. Well, you're gonna do it too. Oh, we got a little party going. I'm right here. I gotta bring the Maryland back. I got my Old Bay sauce. I'm gonna toss it on this, uh, whatever I'm, I've decided to pick up from the beer store. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, if there if there was a chance that a colorblind song could get like a remix and let's say you guys had like your your pick of the litter regarding a co-vocalist to jump on and on this remix, who would you guys choose? <laughs> oh, fuck. Well, we actually have one that's going to be coming out. Uh, yeah. You all right, bro? Yeah, talk about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we actually have one. We've got a remix of Everything But Faith. And uh, that's coming out next month, but I'm I can't say who the feature spot is yet. But it's uh, he's a pretty iconic frontman. Yeah. So we'll we'll recognize the name right away. For yeah. sure. Yeah, for I'm sure. struggling right now, guys. Yeah, but this, <laughs> this one sucks. This one sucks. This is getting really hot, and I'm not even halfway to like the tenderness. It's sour, then it's hot, and then it's sour again. I gotta Wait, look up. you did sour and I did hot on hot. Yeah, mm. I just did whatever the wheel landed on and added some hot sauce to it. Yeah, it's terrible. Don't recommend it. Uh, let's say all of a sudden, manager's like, guys, I just got placement in Avatar Three. Ghost is going to be on the soundtrack for Avatar Three. Comes with a ten million dollar royalty check. Your families are taken care of. You're, you got all the gear you could ever want. You got the badass 18-wheeler touring vehicle, all that stuff. Now it's time to spend some money on yourself. What's some cool toys that you guys would buy? Just just fun stuff. Man, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, good a, lot question. Of my, a lot of my friends are, like, in the car drifting community. They all build, like, drift cars and compete and shit. And I'd, I'd probably, I've ne- like, I've never been able to be, put money aside for that. And I definitely have always kind of wanted to learn how to do some of that fun shit with my friends. I'd probably get some cool fucking, I don't know, like... Get the Fast and Furious whip going? Yeah, or something yeah. cool, yeah. He just said, I want to do hood rat shit with my friends right now. That's what <laughs> yeah. He just said. yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Dude, I think I would buy a lot of property. 
so that I can just fuck off. You know what I mean? Fair enough. But just not be around a whole lot of people, uh, except for my family, my friends. I would have, you know, a nice little drum shed that I could play whenever I wanted and, you know, not have to worry about anything like that. I'm also I'm also a car guy, so I'd probably buy a few cool cars. Um, that's really all I can think of, man. I, I always I dreamed. A whole lot. I always dreamed of like building a house and then having like a, a a bedroom and like knocking the floor out or digging down and then having like a trampoline room. Yeah, that'd be tight. That'd yeah. be super cool. And I could just fucking bounce around with, with the Velcro walls, so you could like bounce and get stuck upside down on the wall yeah. and stuff. What the fuck? That would be awesome. That'd be sick. That'd be wicked cool. Well, I was not ready for any of that. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we're going to stump you on this second trivia question. Okay. Oh, In Shit's shit. Creek. Now, if you get this one right or wrong, never mind. We're, we're done with the trivia, but Mora. You got to drink beer off your foot. Oh, fuck, man. You got to I, I can't. I can't. I can't. I'm not that flexible. Mora stars near the end of the show. Mora stars in a feature film called The Crows Have Eyes 3, The What? The Crows the Have Eyes 3, The What? The Croning. God damn. Damn, dude, you're good. This is awesome. Bro, you better go start pouring that beer off your foot right now. Y you have definitely seen a couple of episodes of that show for sure. The closest I can get is I'll take this flip flop and do this. <laughs> Bring it back. And I'll follow it with a way, shot. Way back. Way back. Way back. Way back. To the promised land. Respect. Hell yeah. I don't wear that shoe. Don't worry. I don't wear it. It's a designated beer flip flop. Flippy floppy, as I like to call it. Oh. <laughs> Shaw, we've got time for just a couple more questions with the, with the boys, but uh, what what would you say is like a final question or two that you might have for them? Oh man, we're dumping these questions on me tonight. Why don't you go first this time, and I'll think about it. Okay, my my question would be <laughs> it's it's kind of somewhat similar to what he asked earlier, but it's a little bit different. Somebody somebody in the industry at some point has given you a piece of advice that was better. And this is just like a personal piece of advice to you. It may not apply to every other band, but what was that advice that was just like an eye opener or, or made you take your, 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 your craft more seriously? Man. Well, I don't know if this is going to answer your question perfectly, but this is something that happened to me that was like kind of changed shit. The first, uh, thing that I ever had to do before I ever played a show. The first mission that I ever went on for Colorblind was going to work with Eric Ron. Uh, so uh, we we went to to Holly to North Hollywood and went to his studio. And I just was so like, I was so fucking nervous to the point to where like I couldn't be creative because I was just having like a fucking breakdown. And um, this is like pre-production times or. Was this, no, this is no, the... just, we just went in and, and we're just writing songs with him from the ground up. Uh, there was no pre-production or, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, I mean, like, he was just kind of like, dude, like, I know that you're having a hard time right now, but, like, I, I'm not going to give you the luxury of, allow, of like, me going to, like, he's like, I'm not going to give you the luxury of, like, writing your shit, like. I'm not, you don't want to be turned into that person, even though sometimes that's totally okay. But like, he let me just kind of sit in that, you know, kind of writer's block and, and anxiety moment. And, and I had to force myself to come out of it. And uh, it just kind of changed uh, studio time for me. Studio time used to be something that I'd be really nervous about, but now it's like the funnest thing in the world for me because I kind of had that like, <laughs> really hellish experience in my head like up front you know um but him just kind of not like holding my hand through that and and allowing me to like work through my own shit has kind of uh given me the tools to do that even in like a show like a, if there's we're playing a big show and i'm nervous it's kind of given me the tools that i gave myself in a way 
through working through that. I don't know. I'm sorry if that's a shitty answer. No, it's cool. You get like a breakthrough moment. I liked it. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. It's wild, dude, because I don't I don't know if you remember BG when, when we first talked. I had I had talked about like that one crazy moment I had with Ash in the back of like the vehicle. No. That, yeah. Um from Sumerian. Yeah. Yeah. So very similar situation to not like very similar. I was I was on my way to LA to to shoot vocals for our first album, These Are My Sins. So it was just a little boy. Little boy back then and uh Yeah, high tight. We yeah, we we had like I wasn't prepared for to handle a man like Ash, and uh, we had gotten to a vehicle with him. And my manager at the time put the instrumental for "Forgiven" on, and and Ash was like, "Sing the chorus." <laughs> like I'm just in the back of the car oh on God. the way to. We're going to see Periphery. Yeah. Sean's going in and out uh, a little bit. It was. Out for us a little bit. You're yeah, you're you're going in and out just a little bit on us, Sean. And he killed it, and he got the deal. But yeah, really, dude, that's sick. That's a fucking awesome. That's sick. But dude, what I'm, what yeah, what my story is getting at to to mesh with yours as as a musician, we're always going to come across that point in time where no matter how good or how talented you are, there's going to be somebody in front of you that's going to say your shit. And what yeah. you would you you're not better than anybody else that I've ever heard before. What what advice would you give to that person? And then that in that moment where they can overcome that shit and be like, I can fucking do this no matter like how difficult this is. Like you went through the vocal experience. I went through the ash, the ash experience, you know, kind of similar to where I had to record like the next day already shit in my pants. Yeah. You know, like how do they overcome that shit? You know? Dude, I think the best way is just... You gotta send it. You, you gotta, gotta just fucking do it. And you also gotta just do it to, to like, fucking tickle your own pickle. Do it to make yourself happy. Do Like, sing, write the melodies that you are, like, oh about. Or, like, you know, like, that's how you get out of that. Because if people are gonna... Because people are gonna tell you you suck up to your face. And if you're, like... I like my shit, then like you have a new, you can walk around with a new level of, of confidence, you know? Um, that's why there's a lot of vocalists. Like, like I, I really love like Anthony green and like, he's somebody that like, when I first heard it, his voice, I was like, mm, I don't know. And then like three or four songs in, I was like, fuck, like, Oh my God, this is amazing. You know? And you can tell that he's doing it for him. He's not doing it to be, pretty for somebody else yeah oh yeah we have actually have a celebrity in chat right now are you guys familiar with the band catch your breath yeah, yeah. teddy of catch your breath in the building what's up man <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> what up? <What's> up? <laughs> hell yeah well fellas this was a lot of fun man thank you guys for hanging out with us uh we look forward to the ep release stay safe on the road in february have a blast if it's okay with you, maybe six or seven months from now, when it, when the release is out, the 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 mystery is out of who's on the remix, we can uh, we can re re get you guys back on the show and just catch up a little bit more. If that's okay with you, maybe six seven months from now. Yeah, we would absolutely love that, man. Hell yeah! And I will I will start watching some shits Creek to make sure that I I find Tuesday. the hardest question next Let's time. <laughs> Dude, give me a show to watch. I'll fuck. It. I'll start watching it. I'll take like a yeah. Lost. Lost? Lost is my favorite show of all time. Okay, all right. Have That's you ever seen long, it? Right? Seasons are in that. Uh, there's pro there's probably like six, but the first two seasons are like 30 episodes a season. But it you'll, like it is today. you'll either hate okay. it by the second or third episode, or you'll think it's one of the greatest shows ever. It's it's very... It was really popular when it came out. I think you'll do okay. it. Okay. It's good, yeah, well, good I don't for the van. I don't mean too much of your time. No, no worries. You, we appreciate you guys Take being here, man. Take up all his fucking time. Fuck PG. <laughs> Take up all of it. Fellas, I appreciate it, man. Thank you guys so much. Stay safe. It's yeah. great to meet nice you, guys. you guys. You yeah. you guys as well. Uh, if you're watching, please support Colorblind any way you can. If you get a chance to make it out to the show, go say what's up to them. Buy some merch. Bring some friends to the show. Have a kick-ass time. Ladies and gentlemen, Colorblind! Give me a hell yeah! Thank you so much, y'all. Start! Yeah!